is. Oh, all right, okay. No, John, you'd be the first to congratulate him. So here it is. You are now officially, we're going to pray for him as well. Come over here, Ollie. I'm going to come down here. Here he is. This is going to go alongside his 20 yards breast stroke certificate in the office with pride. Let's, Father, thank you so much for this man of God. Thank you that he faithfully and um, with his whole heart pastors and leads this congregation week after week. Thank you for all the gifts that you've given him. Thank you for the passion that you've placed in his heart. Thank you that he is a gift to us. We honour that and we support him. We love him and uh, we are proud to say he is our pastor. Thank you, Lord. Amen. No pay rise. There you go. Welcome, everybody, as I was saying. Here we are, 24 years later, 24 years after we started. It's been 24 years and a couple of weeks now since we held our first ever service at Kingfisher, and I think it's fair to say that a lot has happened in that period of time. We've had births, we've had deaths, we've had marriages, we've had hundreds of people come to know Jesus Christ personally, we've had hundreds of baptisms, we've had church plants, we've had the launch of a network, we've been reaching out around the world, we've had albums, worship albums, we've had books published, we've had the launch of the social enterprise, We've had the heartbreak of people leaving. We've had the joy of people joining. Where are we now? Well, the start of this year sees a new look church here at uh, Treadworth. As our two, two church communities, Kingsway and Treadworth, join together to form one powerful community, fit for the purposes that Jesus Christ has got for us in the coming years. From today onwards, hear this, from today onwards, we are not Treadworth or Kingsway. We're Kingfisher. In fact, the Kingfisher family now has three distinct and interdependent parts to it. We've got local church here at Treadworth in the UK, We've got local and increasingly national outreach with the social enterprise. And we've got the international family leadership training and church planting uh, currently in seven countries. Now, I expect and I believe in God for, for growth in each of these areas in this coming year, particularly in this coming year. This is, I think, a, a really special year. I'm currently partway through a tour of the Kingfisher family around the world, taking the message that I believe that God's implanted in my heart for our family uh, around the world, that the Great Commission is alive and well and sweeping this world like a tsunami. And that he's seeking to raise up a new generation of Great Commission disciples to spearhead this tsunami. Now, Great Commission disciples are followers of Jesus who, who take the Great Commission seriously. They're prepared to go and disciple. They're prepared to live lives that set the bar and provide the, the example. They're confident to share the truth that they themselves have received and that's already transforming their own lives. I am believing for a tidal wave to gather force here in this nation and around the world. As I travel around the world, this is what I am seeing. Now, that's the backdrop. But what I want to focus on right now is the question, what part do we play in this? If this wave is coming, how do you and I get on board? Well, you may or may not have noticed, but God's been preparing us uh, for, 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 for this for the past 
few years. The past three years, in fact. He's been preparing us by presenting us, apart from anything else, by presenting us with three phrases. Now, it's my belief that these three phrases come together now. The three phrases are, but God, my confession, what if? You might recognize them. These haven't just been random sound bites, pithy little phrases that come and go, and what's the next one? These have been the building blocks for what God by his Holy Spirit, really wants to do in and through his church. These are the words that form the building blocks of his strategy for us as we move forward. Now, someone who has a mature and proven prophetic ministry, uh, he's based in Spain, and um, he he spoke to me whilst I was uh, out there visiting some churches just recently, He said to me this, he said, you're about to see God do something in and through Kingfisher, the like of which you have never seen before. That was actually underlined by another prophecy that was um, passed on uh, to me me as well, just uh, in the last few days. I believe that's true, and I believe it's in line with the Great Commission. And more than that, he's calling us into partnership as it begins to take place. We come into partnership as we say yes to the challenge of these three phrases. But God. This is about the choice to believe that God can bring something amazing out of a seeming setback. Now, the end of 2016 saw the relocation of the Kingsway congregation to Treadworth. That's been a right thing, but certainly not an easy thing. We've had seven years of mission in Kingsway, and we've experienced a lot along the way. And now that period of time and that journey has come to an end. But... God never wastes anything. And he has plans and purposes for the seeds that have been sown in Kingsway. And he has plans and purposes for the work that he's done and the seeds that he's sown and grown in the team that have faithfully served him there for some or all of those seven years. Now, this isn't about uh, putting a gloss or a spiritual spin on life. This is about saying, God, I trust you. I trust that all things actually do work together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is about drawing a line in the sand and saying, I choose to trust God. I choose to trust that even if particularly if the situation around me doesn't look promising, God has a plan, and that plan is for my good. And he is going to work the plan out. Now, I know that for some of us, 2016 was a rubbish year. As years go, that year sucked. For some of us. For many of us, 2016 contained tragedy. You know what I'm talking about. For some of us, it contained great joy. And for the majority, it it probably contained a mixture of all of that. Here's the challenge. Don't face 2017 with the words, oh, what now? Face 2017 with the words, but God. But God. It's just like those first Christians who, who received the Great Commission could have responded with the words, but how? 
YBH, yeah, but how? But they chose to respond with the attitude, but God. You know, Jesus is dead. Everyone hates us. We don't seem to have a plan. But God. But God is the God of promise. And he promised us that we would go and can go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. The circumstances might not look great. But God has a plan. That right there is the attitude of the great commission disciple. And that right there is the attitude that Jesus Christ is challenging us to adopt right now. Change is not easy. 2016 was not easy for many. But God has a plan. I choose to stand firm in the light of that belief. I will not allow my faith to be defined by my circumstances. Now, honestly, as we look at uh, at all the challenges to come in 2017, in this church, in the social enterprise, as it opens up its second building in Gloucester, taking over Gloucester, one shop at a time, In the international family, as it sees great growth and it faces great opposition and persecution, a lot of it physical persecution as as pastors in the Kingfisher family are regularly beaten, imprisoned, tortured. These are the words that need to ring out, but God, two words that are a declaration of faith. Two words that stand defiant in the face of adversity and seemingly overwhelming challenges and feeling out of our depth. But God needs to be our confident battle cry. He is the God of promise and all of his promises are backed by all the honour of his name. It's time to step up to that and activate it in our lives. How do we do that? My confession. Jesus once said, you know, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You're defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Make that the truth. The truth is what comes out of our mouths. It's just the outward expression of what's going on in our minds. As we well know, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. You know, we thought so much about our confession, what we choose to come into agreement with and speak out. I wrote a book about it in 2015. Some of you even read it. It was that momentous. We went through a whole month of having daily my confessions via email and social media. Why? Just to get us to stop being so negative? No, that's just a byproduct. It was really all for now. Now's the time. It's really, your chickens really come home to roost. Just go back to the Great Commission and you can see how they seized the God given moment to make a positive confession. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. He sees the but God moment. He comes into agreement with what God is bringing about, and he speaks that out. And the Great Commission is launched. There is great power in us coming into agreement with what God is saying. 
So come into agreement with God. Speak it out. Live it out. Our God is the God of promise. And I'm currently writing a book called The God of Promise, which is like part two of Fishing for the King. That book's going to be finished and published this year, and it's just a wonderful affirmation of the trustworthiness of God. If he promises something, he delivers on that promise. He just does. And when we confess, uh, or when what we confess is in agreement with his promise, then like with Peter and those early apostles, great things happen. It's time to step up and activate his promises in our lives by coming into agreement with them and speaking them out. Now, we're in the process of, of reforming community here at Kingfisher, with two congregations becoming one and ministries and groups amalgamating. This is a season of change, and change is often uncomfortable. But here's the challenge. Let's agree together that this is going to be a season of change that propels us forward into the greater things that God's got for us the great commission that he's called us to. Let's agree together that this is going to be a season of grace, where we treat each other graciously, where we use our words to bless and not to curse, where we come into agreement with what God is doing here and we speak that out to each other. This time of new start new beginnings could be a golden season for us. I mean, it really could be a golden year for us. I believe that's God's plan for us. And that's my confession. You heard it here. He is realigning us for the tidal wave of his Holy Spirit that is coming. Even though Satan would want us to be consumed with the uncomfortableness of getting used to two congregations coming together, but God sees this in a very different way. He sees this as the opportunity to pour out his grace on us, to reset Kingfisher, to clear the decks for all that is to come. And in this season, just like with those first disciples at the launch of that great commission, he wants us to actually believe for what if. You see, like with those other two phrases, we have thought a lot about what if. You might remember I, I, I posed the question, what if God is saying the status quo is no longer good enough? What if God is saying, I want you to expect more, believe bigger, aim higher? What if God is saying, I'm calling you to trust more, to act in faith more? What if God is saying the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night is moving? What if it is? Well, what if? What would you do? If God said specifically to you, the status quo in your life, what you settled for, and perhaps just put up with, is no longer good enough. What if he were to say to you, I want you to expect more, to believe bigger, to aim higher. What if he said to you, I'm calling you to trust more, to act in faith more. What would you do? What step of faith would you take? Because I believe that God is saying that as it happens. I believe that this coming year, he's looking for a response to these what-if questions. Now, back in the first century, the what-if question was, what if you were to take this Great Commission seriously? What then? For me, 
I'm trying to take this seriously by focusing fully on the calling that God's placed on my life and becoming full time and in a fully focused way the senior pastor of an international family of churches and ministries. What if I do that and it all falls flat? What if it's a complete bust? What if I get to the end of the year and thousands of people around the world say, James who? Kingfisher what? Well, as Theodore Roosevelt said in his speech, Citizenship in a Republic, you know that one, that he gave in 1910 at the Sorbonne in France. Oh, yes. But actually, this Whoever wrote this speech for him, they wrote it for me. That may be for you. Here's the excerpt. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails whilst daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory or defeat. Faith isn't about knowing that everything you try is going to work. Faith is about knowing that the person you're doing it for is trustworthy and faithful and that the cause of Christ is worth our very best effort, worth giving our final breath for. What if you were to make a confession, come into agreement with God, and agree the status quo, and my current levels of expectation, and trust, and willingness to step out? I'm not settling for that anymore. I'm stepping believe the wave of your spirit is coming. The Great Commission tsunami is going to visit us, and I choose to be a Great Commission disciple of Christ. I choose to dare greatly, to be a builder of this new community, to play my part in this coming Great Commission tsunami. What Lord Jesus, I want to be that person. I believe that your promises are true. I believe that you are God who keeps his promises, who backs his promises with all the honour of his name. I believe this can be our golden year. I believe that what was is no longer good enough. What is is about to become what is. So here am I, Lord. Here am I. Send all those who are in agreement. Agree together and say, Amen. Amen.